Today is Wednesday and we have the promised Amstrad 901 from the same customer as the York JCB 861. Yesterday this is a Hong Kong genuine version as opposed to the Hong Kong pirate copy version. So if you ever want a really, really good Amstrad, buy the 900 without the extra bits because you always know it's a made in Japan genuine. And those extra bits are public address, channel 9 switch and Roger Bleep, so you can do without those anyway. Oh right, well first of all he told me this had um, some Wally undone the ballast resistor. So I bet this smells of, of getting too hot. Not quite sure what's happened to the uh, printed circuit board. The wax has gone yucky. I've got some very, very thin wire to the speaker, but it probably doesn't matter. I think we might put some thicker wire on that. Interesting, it's a it's not the original speaker, that. So the first thing we need to do is to put that resistor back in place. That's a very silly thing to do. Oh, good grief, this has been through the wars, hasn't it? It's had Mr Gas Poker soldering that. Right, well we have these ballast resistors in stock. But where have I put them? We'll pause the video while I find out. I will, one thing I will do before I do that is we'll just see what power it's doing at the moment uh, because there's all kinds of claims that they do a million watts and all this rubbish. So let's have a look. So we're on the 30 watt scale so 4 watts is just there. Better switch the radio on and apply it to channel 20. So at the moment, the radio is doing 2.7, just about 3 watts, that kind of era. So it's not got the ballast resistor in and it's doing 3 watts. So as long as we can do 3 watts without the ballast resistor, we've cracked it. So let's now have a, just a very quick look at how many Zitagi watts that is. So it's doing four Zitagi watts. We'll just look at deviation. Wow. <laughs> right, I'll just change scales to 25 kilohertz scale. So what is it about seven and a half so where are we on the scale that would be um, 25 as if, if it's there it's um, wallow yeah it's seven and a half kilohertz so it's transmitting on three channels at once which is quite fun isn't it this is the customer's mic it's already been through the dishwasher this morning and it's a, a sonic microphone so somebody with a one of those um, GT858, GT868 Sonic sets would we'll give their arm and a leg for that original mic. So we may as well just do the um, the deviation. If I remember rightly, it's that one which is turned up to full. We'll just turn it down considerably. Wallow. Oh, we're still on the 25 skip. No wonder we're not getting it. Well, I'll use the oscillator, it's much easier. So if we just turn that to uh, two, we should be about there. <whistles> Wallow. <whistles> Wall. Actually, could just do with a fraction more. Wallow. <whistles> Wallow. Yep, there we have it. 
absolute peak of two and a half. So that's one thing we've done. Anyway, we'll get back to that uh, resistor. Just see if I can find them. I'd hate to have to order some in. So normally we change that ballast resistor for 3.3 um, ohms. We can vary that because most of the time, if you put 3.6 in, which is supposed to be what's there, it's really inadequate on the output power. We've had to put a bit of wire because they've broken the track away originally, like they've put a bit of wire there because they somebody's broken the track away there as well. Um, so what we'll just do, we'll just run over this with Mr. Chippy's toothbrush. And the isopropyl alcohol. Because there's so many messy looking bits of soldering that I just need to make sure that we haven't got anything with a blatant problem because you can't see if you don't clean the flux away you, d you can't see if there's some bad solder joint underneath the burnt dark nasty bits of flux They really do need defluxing anyway, all these. I'll tip this to uh, one side and let that drain away off camera, but it's quite quick drying. I'll tell you what, we'll do it that way. got something just there so we've got broke we have burnt out track there Yeah, what's happened is the, that the protection diode's there, the track's burnt away there, so there is no protection anymore. So that's one of the reasons uh, we really needed to check. And of course, if you reverse polarity one of these sets, the audio IC will be ruined, the IF IC will be ruined, the bar graft BA656 generator IC will also be ruined. So, and they're very expensive to replace. In fact, I never did check whether the bar graph was working because they're often not on the, on this chassis. Um, so we need to link that across. We well, you know what? Probably use a bit of that wire, to be honest. I don't actually have anything as thin as I'd like to use, so. We're going to replace these, so we may as well utilize some of it. Okay, that's bodged the bodge. That capacity looks like it's supposed to be there. The first thing we're going to do on this is do the VCO. And these radios are quite susceptible to the VCO going out. So it's quite important it's done. I'm going to have to have the service manual for that because I've got a memory like a sieve. So we'll dig out either the Amstrad or the Fidelity 2001 service manual. Okay then, so what I then discovered 
is that I, I did a quick check with the continuity tester and the protection diode which is already in the board which is what that bit of broken track went to was open circuit and that of course is sorry was short circuit which is why we had the problem if I put that on continuity and across the diode it called me a liar but I can assure you that it was um, it was coming up as short on the power supply right that capacitor looks distressed it's the only one I can see we will deal with that before we move on to the receive because that's in the receive side if I can see the small print now this is this is interesting two pounds fifty was the cost of the service manual most service manuals um, for CB radios would be between 695 and 2695 and I spent an awful lot of money at the time um, far too much money on service manuals Rotel I inquired of the price and they sent me them free how about that so Amstrad I think was the cheapest apart from that uh, very kind offering from Rotel they sent me the 240 and says well that basically covers everything which is true so um, yes it's capacitor 9 and what channel are we on they have you start with channel 1 on the Amstrad's so most other set makers have you go the other way around We'll bring that meter back. Now, capacitor 9. Is this one here. And the far side is the test point. So we have to get the prod onto that pin. So you've got this mylar capacitor, you've got the crystal reference uh, coil trimmer there, you've got the reference crystal, you've got the phase light loop chip. Let's see if I can move the camera down a fraction. So, crystal capacitor 9. And I still can't remember whether this is a, a floating chassis or not. Uh, we'll just have to do a quick check. And I may as well do that check between the diode I've just put in. No, it's not. So we need to... It's a floating chassis, it's not a, a, an earth chassis, so we'll just need to put a negative. Oh, the easiest thing to do here is put it on the power supply, to be honest. So we'll just check now we've got rail voltage. And we have. Okay. So on channel 1 with our test prod there I just CT1 to give 12 volts in transmit CT1 So where has the mic gone?
So in transmit, we've got 1.2 volts, which is no good at all. Just do this in such a way. I'll, I'll have to zoom out because I, you know we just can't get everything into in the camera. So with the CT trimmer there. So 1.99 we've got. We'll let go of that. So back to the instructions using a non-metallic tool. So on receive we should also have 2 volts and we just transform a 1. as ever these are interactive so there we are 2.0 2, there we are on receive and then on transmit it's now totally out of kilter actually I'm going to waggle that round in case it's dirty so transmit receive transmit receive now we move to channel 40 and what they want is that the voltage is between 4 and 5 volts on receive it is and then on transmit they're expecting it to be between four to five volts it isn't so I'm going to adjust the trimmer a fraction till it is so I'm going back to channel four to channel one so we're on receive it's two we're on transmit it's 2.4 So we're going to have to set a compromise here. We'll have it about 2.2. We'll go back to channel 40. 3.5. 3.6. So that's our compromise. We'll put that away. If you don't do that, you're going to end up with channels dropping out at the top and the bottom especially in cold weather like minus two if you've got a Midland 78 with a blue display and it doesn't work so moving on to RF power we're going to do two three and four yeah two three so we're still on the 3 watt scale the radio is doing 2.4 watts at the moment bearing in mind we put the ballast resistor in so it's now less than when that was missing let's pray that none of these are broken and I need to select channel 20 I was about to do my usual trick of forgetting what channel I was on so it's doing 2.8. We've got a peak there. I'll be looking at this on the spectrum analyzer later as well because of the situation that it's had with the messing about with the PA.
Right, now we'll change scales. And the radio is doing 4.4 .4 watts there is an absolute peak. I just need to make sure that everything is at peak and then we'll drop that to 4. I think what we'll do, we'll look at the spectrum analyzer at this point because we might have had Mr. Coil Stretcher in there. Can't always achieve 4 watts uh, with the ballast resistor present. That's probably why some of them take it out, except they pretend they're getting about 7 watts out of it, don't they? But they're not at all. You don't want to be wrecking the Mitsubishi output transistor because most of the ones on the market are fake. I've said this before. If someone's offering you 2SC2166 transistors, they're going to be at least 20 years old and they're going to be tarnished because Mitsubishi stopped making them 20 years ago. So anyone who's selling nice shiny ones are going to be fake. It's, it's pretty logical. All right, let's look at the spectrum analyzer. Auto, let's see what we can find. Okay, so let's look at it manually. Frequency 27.79125. Enter. So. As you can see, we've got a naughty peak at 54 megs. We'll just see if we can improve that. think that is about as good as we're going to get. I'll measure that now. So you can see we've got a, that's off scale, the big one now, and that because I've magnified it. So we're, we're just about in spec, it's, it's borderline. Blooming sight better than it was. So let's look at what power we've got. I'll go back to the power meter. We've actually got 4.1, but as the radio heats up, that will soon disappear down to 4. I've never seen 
whether these are well balanced or not. Let's see what it is on channel 40. It's 4.2. On channel 1, it's 4.4. 4. So that's when the set's cold. I think we'd better just drop this a fraction. safer right so that's the transmit done we'll recheck the deviation while oh, that's fine listen to that on the monitor receiver testing one two three four five five four three two one sounds like the mic works freshly laundered smells nice now what about the meter you, oh, you've got low power on these sets. Let's see what it measures. It's not adjustable. It's 0.25. That's how it is. Right. Transmit. Bar graph. So that needs to come up. They want, yeah, they say here that the, you know really the radio should be 3.7 watts. The current consumption... Should be less than 1.6 amps. We're on low power. That's it. 1.52 amps. I could still do with coming down. And to keep the second harmonic at bay, we're tuning this upwards. As we're tuning it off from its peak, we need to tune it upwards on this particular set to keep the 54 meg second harmonic at bay. If we tuned it down, it'd be worse. So, uh, yeah, they say 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 for the low power. So it's RV1. And it's that one there. And they say all lights should be just lit. This on low power, it should be one light. And it is. In fact, they actually ask you to align it on low power to one light. It's pretty meaningless, but it is a real power meter and not like modern sets where it's just a TX light on a bar graph. Right, uh, we'll just pause the video and I'll change that capacitor. Right, we'll get back on with the receive. Wallow. Yep, everything's right. Oh, I know what we haven't done. We haven't put it, checked whether it's on frequency or not. Good grief, that's miles out. That's out of spec, that. Oh dear, oh dear. Mmm. Oh, 
that's dropped out of spec. Right, we're about to take the reference crystal out. Well, I don't often get that. Yeah, it's like one in 200 sets. And just to check that it's not a, a malfunction on the actual um, radio, we'll check this with a crystal tester. It's one of those things which Mr. Chippy bought in a kit from China. So 10.239 instead of 10.24 could well be enough for it to be as out of spec as it is. So let's see if we can find where we keep replacement crystals. Okay, let's see where there are Hooray brand replacement crystals are any better than what's come out. Hooray! Goodness, that's worse. find a second hand one. Mind you, it'll be cheaper for the customer. So you do the right thing and buy brand new parts and then they're out of spec. Well, at least that says 10.24 on it. Okay, so now we're higher than what we should be, which is exactly where we want it because the coil was at its absolute maximum. So 27.79125, we'll pop it down. I'll check it later as the crystal cools down. There we go. That's excellent. Right, we're going to receive, which is what we were originally doing. Honestly, never see radios this that much off frequency. So we're looking at the f the frequency counter reading the signal generator. So I'll just make sure we've got squelch down, RF gain at maximum. Tone control to centre. We need to plug the test equipment into the extension speaker socket. That sounds awful. It's 0.3 of a microvolt. That's 100 microvolts, and it looks awful on the oscilloscope. How awful is that? 
So it sounds like the detector's miles out. About 12 decibel cyanide. Let's see whether we can quickly do the IF. to about 12.
It's slightly lopsided, uh, like it's non-sinus. I mean, it's, it's come on um, uh, leaps and bounds if we go back to the oscilloscope. To, uh, to how it was, but I wouldn't say that's exactly 100% normal. But then I must say, how many Hong Kong Amsterdam Nano ones do I see? I don't know how well they actually work. In fact, to be honest, we wouldn't normally accept the Hong Kong version for repair. Um, I should check if it's still on frequency. It's dropped a fraction as it's cooled down, so I'll deal with that. That might help. So where's its sensitivity? Well, we've got for 12 decibel cyanide, we've got 0 0.65 of a microvolt. For 10 decibel cyanide, we've got 0 0.55 microvolts. And I don't think it will achieve 20. No, it won't. 18 is the best it will ever go. So let's see what the service manual says as to what the sensitivity should be. Because this is for the Japanese genuine version. I know this is the genuine cheap version. These were 59.99 as opposed to 89.99. It's supposed to be able to do <laughs> 0 0.5 of a microvolt for 10 point uh, for for 20 dB cyanide. I think not. So I'm just going to look at filters, just in case somebody's messed about. So we have the. 455 filter down there which looks normal enough and we've got the 10.7 ceramic filter down there which also looks quite normal enough I'm going to give it one more go you know what I think I think we've got a I think the 455 filter is broken. Let's see what our scrap chassis has got. Right, that's made all the difference. Um, you can now see we've got a proper sine wave. It's a filter that's come out. Because the chassis I've pinched one from is a Japanese chassis. It's better quality in the first place. Um, so if we go on the uh, go back to sine meter we've now got 20 db sine ad for 1.3 microvolts now before we couldn't even get 20 db sine ad so if we now move down the scale and look at 12, it's about there, we're now getting 0.65 for 12, and for 10, getting 0.52. We're not going to do better than that. That's 0.3 of a microvolt. We can actually hear the set down to 0 0.2. So, yeah, we obviously we've seen a lot better, but um, it's a cheap set. And it's an old cheap set, and it's one that's been messed with. Right, uh, so it's now on frequency. We'll just triple check that. Yeah, it is. And all that means to do le uh, left is the squelch and now they're wishy-washy at the best of times to squelch on this chassis we need to do the s meter so was that the one i was fiddling with down there 
yeah so we can do s9 to there with 100 microvolts so that just leaves the squelch which is there so if i turn squelch to full that's 10 microvolts so let's see whether we can get more than that out of it i'll turn it to 30 turn it to 100 in fact Tell you what, we can. I'll tell you what, that's set up properly. 100 microvolts. Right, we'll take it down. We'll turn the signal generator off and park it at 0 0.3 of a microvolt. We'll turn the squelch down to threshold. Set the squelch. And now switch the signal generator on. It's come straight in. So let's see what what it's doing. Well, it's coming in at 0 0.3 of a microvolt and it's leaving at 0 0.12 of a microvolt. So you can't argue over that at all. Just out of interest, we'll see whether the Roger Bleat works. If it doesn't, I don't care at all. But we'll just see. So go back into transmit. In fact, we're going to deviation. There we go. Where will Roger bleed? So, a bit of a bag of worms, this one, but I think we've got something usable. So, it just really means for me to do this. So, we'll put some better wires on that, put it together, and hopefully, Bob's your uncle. But didn't that filter make a difference? At least we get 20 dog biscuits out of it now. Okay, so we've put some wire on this uh, speaker leading to the super thin stuff which was on before. As I keep saying a million times, we've got a lot of stuff here in storage uh, because there's impending building work which is taking place. There's a 24 by 16 building going up with a for a pipe organ. Um, so we have every color wire available in the resistor color code in solid and in stranded with all except the white is in storage so what I've done is to identify which one is the positive and I've put some black sleeving on because obviously black's going to mean positive, isn't it? Now, polarity doesn't matter. We've been through this a, a million times. That uh, tag's broken as well on the speaker. So, we'll still put the negative to negative. And the positive to the positive. I'd hate the tonal quality to be ruined by the small wire which was there before. So we've got quite a lot gone into this. We've got the ballast resistor replaced. Uh, we've got um, we've got more power coming out of it. Uh, I replaced the thingy down there, <laughs> the filter. We replaced the crystal. We replaced the protection diode. Replaced that capacitor. And I have found the other one, which I took out, if I can only get that lid on. Because a minute ago, I found it. You know, it's, that one, it's gone again. Well, I was going to test that. Still can't find it. Right, so I'll turn the set over. Cleaned up the board considerably better than it was, and where I've done soldering, it's definitely been cleaned over. RF lost after TX. Ah, yeah.
Well, that was all VCO, wasn't it? Because uh, it was right on the border of lock. So, transmit. Doesn't disappear now. S9. You know what? We're going to have to reset the S meter because since changing the filter, I think I set that before I did the filter. Took me ages to put that lid on as well. that we never get plus 30 yeah it's a bit it's slightly inaccurate but um not exactly a, supposed to be that precision is it right we'll try and put the lid back on again it's a faff when of these two piece lids uh, you know as in overlapping this came with no screw so hopefully I'll find where I've hidden my screw collection so once again we're going to transmit I'll just turn the volume down so it's no not definitely not losing uh, its lock transmit transmit so we'll turn the signal generator off and we'll just see how many Zitagi watts the radio is doing just see if the speaker works as well. Yep. So we had four Zitagi watts, didn't we? So back on channel 20. Let's see how many Zitagi watts we've got now. Oh, we've got about five and a half Zitagi watts now. Good. Right, we'll pop the aerial on. I did these in an order that, of, of ease. I thought the York 861 would be the easiest to do. And then uh, I thought uh, we'd do the Amstrad. Then to demodify the uh, Fidelity 2000 will be tomorrow. If we've time, may even have to go over two. It depends if that uh, demodification takes more than forty minutes. Uh, we're going to be in trouble. One on a Roger. Of course, that wouldn't be me he's talking to one nine a Roger. See how he's off frequency? Ancaster. He's not talking to me. Um, that concludes the Amstrad 901 Hong Kong cheap 59.99 version from 1982. Or was it 1983 when they did that version? And then there's the awful one, the 2999 
fake copy. I've said about that before. It's the one with the printer circuit board does not have screen printing on it uh, with the component location. So they're the three. You've got the genuine one, which is made in Japan on the back. You've got this one, which is still genuine but cheap. Hong Kong one. And then it ends with the fake one. And unfortunately, there's more fake ones than real ones. And so it got a bad name. Um, I mean, because they do work reasonably well. Thank you for watching.